They hold almost every detail of our lives, the messages and memories, the private and the personal. Little wonder that the phones and tablets we carry with us almost every moment are vital stores of potential evidence in criminal investigations. But forces across the country face huge questions about how long they're holding on to phones and exactly what information they're taking from them. Our investigation reveals more than 21,000 digital devices, including phones, tablets and computers, are waiting to be examined in criminal investigations. Two of the country's biggest forces, the Metropolitan Police and Greater Manchester Police, refused even to disclose their backlog through our Freedom of Information requests. So the true scale of this problem is likely to be even greater. How long did they have your phone for in the end? Must have been about four and a half years. There is a very human cost to this technological backlog. Amy Pearson was raped by a man she met on a date. She's waived her right to anonymity. Her case ended in a conviction, but she says it meant her whole life, so much of it captured on her phone, being sifted through by police. It was like I was the criminal. He was like the victim. Um, it was just like they were pulling me apart. By the time she got it back, she says, much was lost on many fronts. Some people say, well, it's just a phone. But what is the impact of the phone being taken away for such a long time? I had messages and pictures of my nana on there, and my nana died six months after. So, obviously, for me, it was sentimental value. I still had to pay the contract on it when my mum did. Then, obviously, I had to find the money for another contract. It's just a long period of time. So it was an iPhone 6 back then. And now we're on iPhone 13, so... Suffolk Police say it is investigating Amy's case and can't comment further right now. This is about so much more than the inconvenience of not having your phone. This sits right at the heart of so many cases within the criminal justice system. The longer it takes police to analyse the data on phones or other devices, the longer it takes for people's cases to move forward, the longer the wait for justice on all sides. Liam Allen was wrongly accused of rape in 2017 after police failed to hand over key evidence from his accuser's phone. The Metropolitan Police and Crown Prosecution Service apologised unreservedly to him. He now supports others who say they've been falsely accused and says the long wait to get devices analysed is damaging for justice. A lot of people are even saying they know the evidence is there, they've told the police it's in that phone give it to me and I'll show you. Down, like, download it, take whatever copies you need, but give me the phone and I'll show you where it is. The backlog is causing issues both sides. Like, it's only going to harm victims' cases and it's only going to harm, you know, defendants' cases. It's, it, it, ultimately, it just means that there is not going to be justice achieved. That's the point of the system. We were invited to the Metropolitan Police's Digital Forensic Unit, where £11 million is being spent to help speed up and refine how and what phone data is taken, particularly critical in sexual offence cases. They can be told, for example, it's something regarding um, chat. So literally, the officer will take chat and then that's it. So everything else you see there does not come out of that particular extraction. Your phone's not taken away. So there's generally no surprises there, no digital strip search. Officers here at Scotland Yard say there's been an exponential growth in both the volume and complexity of cases, which they say explains the backlog of devices, though they won't tell us what theirs is. I'm assuming that the Met do know what their backlog is. Yes, yeah, we, and we are absolutely focused on that. But and, you can't tell us what it is. But I, I can't tell you at this point in time what it is. Um, we're absolutely focused on reducing the amount of work that is waiting to be done and also when we start that work whether we can do it quicker and there are some things that we can definitely do quicker once we're able to get to it and there are some things that will always take a bit of time and people might see that as a backlog but as with other parts of forensic science there are many things that you cannot do immediately. The delays and how phone evidence is handled are a critical part of what the Director of Public Prosecutions conceded today is a crisis of confidence around the prosecution of rape. The government's rape review said it now wants phones given back to victims within 24 hours to help repair some of that damage. Few are holding their breath.
I've no never seen anybody get their phone back within 24 hours. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that you'll find that women that do our jobs get so frustrated because the CPS will announce things, the government will announce things, and then on the ground we see absolutely no change at all. So the, it's rhetoric, it's not actually been a change in practice at all. So it is action that is needed to tackle a problem that on the surface is about things, devices, but at its heart is about lives at their most vulnerable and a backlog which is putting those lives and justice on hold.